So I wanted to share with you a little story and an investigation that went on uh, based on this question. This is Hugo asking Chris Coyer, do you have any source confirming that 2D transforms uh, translate is better than moving objects with position absolute and top right, bottom left, uh, which I abbreviate as TRBL or trouble. Um, they are trouble. And we're going to dive into why. This kind of gets into a little bit of a mess of hardware acceleration, um, paint time, costly CSS, um, and, and what's really going on inside the browser. But it's pretty interesting. So let's. So this actually, this idea um, is something that I worked on an article a little while ago over on H1.5 Rocks about this. And down here we said, well, you can probably the best way to handle movement is by using translate. And so we can, for instance, uh, detect if we have transforms and transitions. And if so, we'll use a translate. Otherwise, we'll animate, say, with jQuery. Um, with left. Now this will animate by kind of changing the inline style nonstop. Um, whereas here we hit set a transition. Um, but Chris got this question and started making a demo. And instead of using this sort of animation, he's like, well, we'll just use CSS animation. So we'll do it with that. So Chris Coyer made this uh, example here. So we're animating with translation. You can see that here. We just have some keyframes. We're animating back and forth. Um, and similarly, uh, for this top left version, we're just animating our uh, top and left from 130 to 200, 130. That's cool. Um, but if we take these and I kind of break them off and put them side by side, like you can't really tell much. Um, in f like, I, I think actually the top left looks a little bit better here, but this is such a bare bones demo um, that what you really want is something a bit more complex that's more like what you're going to see on your actual site or app. So let's try and get there. So I uh, said let's kind of up this. Um, so we have the, the famous single element MacBook Pro um, CSS on top of a pretty heavy CSS gradient. In this case, uh, top left. In this case, translate. Now, if I bring this back and put these side by side, um, one thing that's a little hard to see, and I wish I could zoom in uh, on this for you, um, they look both pretty smooth. And we were looking at this and, and digging into it, and when I, when I looked really closely, the top left actually looks a little bit better then the translate. And I was like, I've told people to use translate. Um, so this is embarrassing. Um, but I f we found out why. So if we take these two uh, examples, and then we change a little bit of the CSS. So instead of this like uh, 45 degree back and forth, we're going to make it a little bit more subtle. So we're going to go down to just three pixels off on the right hand side. And we'll go three pixels down for the translate. OK, OK. So I'm going to bring these together and zoom in on them. Because what you're going to see is that uh, this very sharp contrast line um, in the top left over here, um, it's staying pixel fit. And we get this stair stepping effect because we're only going down three pixels and then back up. And so it's actually just stepping down the pixels and then coming back up. And you can kind of you can see that. Whereas in the translate side, <clears throat> it's going between the pixels. Um, and what we're seeing on this very sharp high contrast edge on the top end is it's kind of going bzz, 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 blurring. And James Robinson, a WebKit engineer uh, here on the Chrome team, called this the dubstep effect because we're getting the sharp line that's only a pixel thick, but it's blurring as it kind of moves down three pixels and back, but we're kind of interpolating between the pixels to try and make it as smooth as possible. Because um, that's probably what you want, but in this case it does kind of lose a little bit of animation fidelity. This is a, a really nice post by Dustin Curtis about um, the concept of, of actually matching pixels, uh, images to device pixels. Um, instead of anti-aliasing them. 
And uh, so this is actually what is going on, whereas in the top top left version, we're actually trying to match them to the unique pixels. Um, and top left actually doesn't have a way to go sub pixel. Um, you have to stay on the integer pictures themselves. Whereas in translate, we can kind of go between. Now, in this, uh, this example is a little interesting because we have this very high contrast demo um, that we're that we're looking at, and on a normal site you may not have such a sort of s this kind of a situation. But what this basically unveiled <coughs> is that um, the animation fidelity is a little bit stronger in Translate, um, but over here in the absolute positioning side, um, we get a little bit closer to what uh, looks good to us because of uh, we're staying on the actual pixels themselves. Now, this isn't the whole story, um, because let's dive into why exactly the recommendation was to use Translate in the first place. So now that we have these kind of going back and forth, uh, we can dig into um, what's actually happening inside the browser. So I'm going to open up the Chrome DevTools on, um, on the abs positioning top left one. And I'm going to record a, a little bit of timeline. So I just recorded a timeline in frames mode. Um, and this is what it looks like. For now, I'm just going to let that sit here. And then I'm going to come over to our other window. In fact, let me uh, cancel out. As long as I hide that, uh, that one, it won't affect here. Here I can get a little bit cleaner of a recording. OK, so now I have no other animations going on, on the screen at the same time. It's going to be a bit better. Now we'll do the same over here. Yeah. All right. Let's see if I can get these both on the same. There we go. All right. So if you can see here, um, there's a big difference as far as uh, what these recordings look like. Um, and the big difference is that there's an enormous paint time spent um, on the top left version. And we don't see that over here. And what this basically means is that the browser has to figure out, has to spend uh, 8 milliseconds each time it paints a frame. And right now we're staying underneath our 60 frames per second goal. Um, and so we're good. But this is a very simplistic demo. But 8 milliseconds spent on paint is a, is a pretty hefty amount of time. And a part of that is because there's a, there's a very uh, chunky background, um, or sorry, box shadow that's set on here that adds up. If I actually, uh, I can remove that box shadow. I'll start a new timeline. I'll switch over, come down, I'll remove the box shadow, come back and finish. And you can see right here uh, the difference in what that box shadow um, contributed to the paint time. It was pretty significant. So certainly box shadow is contributing. But we have box shadow over here in the translate case too. And yet we don't have such enormous paint times. So what's actually happening here in the difference between these two is that in the translate case, we actually have um, put the, the little MacBook Pro div onto the GPU as a layer. It's technically called a render layer in WebKit. And it exists in a, in a different layer. So the GPU is able to just move it back and forth, um, quickly composite things, and show it. And we're not at, have to recalculate um, how things look. A good way to kind of ex exacerbate the effect that we see here is if I just take this uh, MacBook and kind of make a few of them. It's just going to stack them. Uh, so you see that box shadow really going crazy. And now here you should really see the difference in our fidelity. It's getting very chunky. There's a lot of jank over here on the left uh, with the, the position absolute. And on the right hand side where everything's just sitting on the GPU, it's very, very smooth. And that has a lot to do with the fact that our paint time is so considerable uh, over here on the left. 
Um, we are far above uh, our 30 frames per second mark, so we're probably hitting around 15, 10 frames a second. And our paints are taking uh, a good 61 milliseconds apiece. And then over on the, on the right hand side, we're staying <laughs> really, really fast. We're, we're staying within our frame budget by quite a big margin, even though we have this crazy stack of, uh, of MacBooks on top of each other. Uh, another interesting way to look at this is we can go into um, the DevTools over here, and I'm going to bring up uh, settings uh, like this, and we'll turn on show paint rectangles. And let me just kind of try and get this one out of the way. So in show paint rectangles, what we're getting is the we're asking the browser to draw a rectangle around the area that's being painted uh, whenever it happens. So these paints tell me where they are, uh, where they're occurring. You can actually normally hover right here um, and see where this paint occurred. But now we're just getting live updates on all the paints that are happening. And we're getting uh, paints nonstop for this layer as it moves across. But I have paint rectangles turned on on the right hand side and we don't have any paints going on at all. And this is just a further indication that it's on the GPU. I'm going to show one more way to look at this, which is uh, we can go into about flags and turn on show composited rendered layer borders. <laughs> uh, composited rendered layer borders. I'm sorry, it's a mouthful. Uh, I'm going to relaunch the browser and uh, leave, leave. Wait just a heartbeat. We'll get our chromes back. Kill this and this and this. All right. So this is a little bit different. It's going to take every layer that is composited on the GPU, and it's going to draw a little bit of a box around it. And here you can see that we have a box around our translate example, but not over here on our top left. And this is just a further indication that this is not being manipulated on the GPU, it's staying on the CPU, and that's why our paint times are so, um, so long and we get a bad frame rate. Now this is a pretty reduced uh, demo. Um, a typical web page, website, web application is going to have a lot more going on than just this. Um, but this is a good idea on how you can use the tools to find out what the behavior is um, of your animation style and how exactly you could make some changes to improve it. Hope that helps.